guess what we got in the mail today? Our battery replacement for our APC backup power supply. So we're going to open this up and see if it works. And I got this the other day and so it came priority mail. Obviously I blocked out my information, but this is the way it came in the package. And this is supposed to be a direct replacement for this APC Backups 550 power supply. And so anyway, last uh, this is part two. The first time we diagnosed that this battery is not uh, holding a load anymore. It just doesn't really hold a charge. And so anyway, we're going to put a new battery in it and that should take care of our problem. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so it's wrapped up in a box here and uh, this thing is really heavy too. So hopefully it arrived undamaged. And let's open it up here and see. Hopefully it's in one piece or it's not cracked or anything. So anyway, we're going to get this out here. And nice uh, factory box there. So let's take a look here. And that's a 12.8 HR. Okay, all right. Okay, well, so far so good. Looking like, like it's supposed to. Nice new battery here. There we go. Get the red terminal, get the negative terminal. Uh, it's still nice and sealed up. I don't see anything leaking on it. And I just took the little plastic thing off here. We'll take that one off there too, because we don't really need those on there. And yeah, so that looks pretty good. Let's just compare it with the other one here, just to make sure that they're the same size. And they appear to be the same size there. This looks a little different on top here, uh, where this one you can actually see the, the plugs for the individual cells here. But as far as the information, it uh, looks about the same there. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in that APC backup power supply and see what happens. So let me get things cleaned up here. I'll be right back. So it's really easy to put the battery in this thing. And so we're going to open it up here. So you just push on it. And then here's the wires in here. You get your positive and negative in here. And we're going to put it on the side here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put the because this will, this will go in here like that. So let's plug the terminals in here. Actually, let me zoom out a little bit here. So we will put the hot on first here. And then we will put the negative on here. And you might get a little spark here, or maybe not. And this battery is very heavy, so there we go. Battery's in there. We're going to put the uh, door back on it. Now, what they say is actually, before you use these things, you're supposed to plug these in and let it uh, be on the line voltage for about 16 hours to let it charge the battery up. But we're going not to do that. We're just gonna see what happens right now. So I'm gonna plug this in. Okay, so it is powered up. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna turn this on its side here so you can see it here a little better. And we're gonna hold the let it go through its diagnostics here. And 
I just heard a relay click in there. And that flashing light means it's going through the diagnostics. And look at that. No alarm. We have power. So let's confirm that. Let's plug something into it here. We're going to actually plug uh, one of our lights here that we're using. So it's going to get dark here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to plug that light in there. Now if we unplug the power, that should stay on and it's going to alarm. So let's find out. And look at that. It's still on. Now it's beeping. It's telling you that it's on backup power. And the green light's still on it. Very cool. So we'll plug the power back in it. And you just saw the light flash there because now it's charging on the line. So we'll unplug this here. And I'll tell you what, those little plugs are very, very tight. And let's plug the power back in here for the light here. There we go. That yeah, looks a lot better. So yeah, so very good. Excellent. I'm really, really happy. So now I can take this upstairs and hook this to my main computer, which is my iMac. And that way we'll have a backup power supply. I'll even hook up my uh, Mac Pro up there too on this. And that'll work out quite nicely. It'll be nice to have a backup power supply especially when I'm doing videos or something like that, at least it gives me time to shut everything down. Now there is software you can download for this power supply and it's the Backups APC PowerShoot software. Now I did find a version that runs on the Mac, however I have not downloaded it. What I actually did is I did download it for uh, Windows 7 because I have an old Windows laptop that I found in a, the uh, a, a trash fine, uh, estate sale fine. I did a video on it. And I, it's nice to have something like that. It's, I look at them like a bridge machine, like maybe software is not available for one machine. And you can fiddle around with it and, and get it to work. So I actually haven't tried it yet, but I have to get... On this here, I'm going to get this in the light just right. This here's the connector. Now, it looks to me like it's almost like a printer connector, but I'm going to, I got all kinds of USB connectors. I'm going to see if I can find something that will plug into that because that will allow you to attach it to that. And then the other end of that goes to the USB port on your computer. And supposedly, uh, you, can do th you can do things on here. And... What you can do is you can actually take and uh, program this thing and it actually does uh, an analysis on it as far as uh, it tells you, you know, the, the state of your battery health. You can actually turn off the alarm or reprogram it or turn it down and it gives you a variety of little, little features that you can do on these power supplies, these newer ones, which I thought that's pretty cool. But that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to just play with it. And I might even do another video on this uh, actually demoing that uh, software. But what I want to do is I want to get it for my Mac, download it on that, and, and use it on that. Because like I said, I'm not a PC user. I do have a couple PCs. I don't really do anything with them. I just uh, kind of play around with them in terms of like maybe getting software off of a certain application and put it on my Mac. So yeah guys, so this has been a, this has been a success. Uh, like I said, I found this at work in the dumpster. Like I said before, you never know what you find when you go dumpster diving. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, the, I mean, these aren't really that expensive anyway. Uh, I Like I said, I've seen these things, the whole unit for anywhere from about 120 40 I even saw one that was like $99, but it wasn't quite the same model. And 
The battery that I got for it was $19.99 and that was also including the shipping and that was uh, came from uh, California and I got it like in two days so that was great and that's the common complaint with these I've looked on the forms and it, it's always the batteries go bad on these things now there are different batteries you can put in these uh, you can actually put a lithium-ion battery in these uh, they do make them in a pack uh, that will fit in this charges up the same way but those are quite a bit more pricey I think I saw them for like fifty or sixty dollars and I just went ahead and used the uh, the lead acid battery like what came out of it so it's charging good I'm gonna let this thing charge I'll let it charge overnight actually I'm gonna let this charge all night and then I'm going to put it on my computer system tomorrow and that'll be just a nice little thing to, to have. Um, it's not uh, crucial, but you know, if you do a lot of computer work or a lot of video editing or something like that and you're worried about power outages, then this is definitely uh, a nice little asset to have. Now they do make these power supply backup systems in just about any size you want. Uh, you can even get them big enough to run your whole house. Um, but these are just real tiny little things and they're just for a couple of devices. And like I said, if uh, you got something, uh, like maybe you have your router plugged in there, or maybe you have your uh, TV or whatever in there. Of course, the newer LED TVs, they don't consume nearly the power like the older plasma TVs did so this would handle it a lot better in terms of it would last longer and especially with the newer computers uh, they're all very energy efficient now especially the newer generations of uh, Apple computers that are going to be coming out soon I'm very excited I'm going to uh, upgrade my iMac when those are out newer iMacs when they come out I'm very excited to, to see when they come out and you know I'm just curious what the price point's going to be on those but I think it'll be a nice, uh, a nice change with the new Apple lineup. Very excited to get one of those. So please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I hope you like this video. Please hit the subscribe button and click the bell. We're also on MeWe and Twitter. You can reach out to me on Twitter. And I also want to thank everybody who watches my channel, who has subscribed. We're up to 1,066 subscribers. That's, uh, I, I just, I can't believe that my channel has really gained that much popularity in of recent weeks. And I really appreciate it. So I got some videos coming up, guys. And I think you'll like them. We're gonna be revisiting the Franken Mac. We're gonna be playing with the uh, screen on it. Uh, it's got a little screen flicker and it's just a dirty HDMI connector cable on it. And then also, um, I also tried to make it like an anti-glare on the front of it, that little plastic sh protective cover that I put over the screen. I used some flat, clear protective spray, and it worked a little too good. It actually really dimmed the screen down. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take the screen off of it. It comes out real quick. going to put a new piece of plastic in there that protects the screen, then we'll put the screen back down on it. Basically, it's just hot glued in there. And then that should take care of our problems. But it's a nice little nice little machine. Uh, it's got a little Mac Mini 2012 that powers it, but it's got kind of the look of the older SE30, although we did a modified a little bit there as far as the screen bezel, because I put basically a 10.1 inch screen in it, trying to make it as big as I could in that little tiny form factor of the compact Mac. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.